we're Outside Xbox, this is Show of the Week and I'm Andy. And I'm Jane. This week I failed my driving test in Dead Island Riptide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take that zombie. Didn't get my boat licence either. Hey guys. <laughs> Speed <Rose. laughs> Meanwhile, I've been putting together my audition tape for the role of the Penguin in Batman Arkham Origins. Hello, Batman, apples and pears, mild man to dust moon, Woo-y. Yeah, fingers crossed. Speaking of Batman... I also do Calendar Man as well, Warner, if you're watching. Oh, hello, Batman. I was just thinking about the horrible murders I did on the Secretary's Day. Come, no, come back, it's good. Speaking of Batman, uh, this week we've been clobbering him and his superpowered mates in fighting game Injustice Gods Among Us, just out this week. Metropolis will be history. Injustice Gods Among Us is a highfalutin name for what might otherwise be called Superman vs. Batman vs. everyone else, the fighting game. The game takes the superhero and supervillain stars of comic mega publisher DC and has them knock seven bells out of each other using all their appropriate powers, gadgets, and sharks. Yes, thank you, Aquaman. The weightier actual name of the game has the benefit, firstly, of fitting on the box, and secondly, of referring to the dramatic storyline, which explains how the forces of good and evil get jumbled up in a super powered civil war that turns hero against hero. So big. So dumb. <laughs> As the game begins, the Joker tricks Superman into nuking Metropolis and killing Lois Lane. Understandably narked, goody goody Superman goes off the rails and establishes a new world order with the support of sympathetic super people. That leaves Batman to stand up to soups. He starts an insurgent movement, gathering the rest of the goodies and baddies to his side. That's the story you'll explore in the single player mode, and that's how Batman winds up working with Harley Quinn, for instance. Occupy any law enforcement you can. I'm on it. The spectacular one on one brawling takes place in iconic DC locations such as Metropolis, Gotham, Wayne Manor, the Batcave, and Atlantis. Yes, thank you, Aquaman. It's a trap. Of course it is. The scenery is interactive, where interactive means you can smash it into your opponent or smash your opponent into it. On top of that are these spectacular stage transitions in which you blast your enemy into a whole new location. The game comes from the people who gave us Mortal Kombat, but it's far from the same game with superhero skins. Not least because now you're holding back to block attacks, as in just about every other fighting game. And unlike in crossover game Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe, you've got light, medium and heavy attacks on the face buttons instead of high and low punches and kicks, and with the B button reserved for unique character traits. These vary wildly from fighter to fighter. For Wonder Woman, it means changing stances to mix up combat. For Superman, it's a temporary stat boost. Aquaman talks to fish or something, I guess. I'm the king of Atlantis. I answer to no one. That's even more variety layered onto a diverse bunch of brawlers, meaning there's plenty to learn and more to Injustice's whole deal than settling once and for all whether Batman or Superman would win in a giant world-ending battle royale. Stay down. All right, great, we can finally figure out who would win in a fight between Batman and Superman. Yeah, but we could do that before, I mean, it's Superman. <laughs> Sorry, it was, sounded like you said Superman? Yeah, uh, he's an omnipotent alien with X-ray, heat vision and ice breath, and also he can fly, so... But Batman is the world's greatest detective. He just outsmarts Superman, trick him into punching himself in his own face. I'm Something. not getting into this again, I'm going for a coffee. He'd shoot him with kryptonite bullets! No, he wouldn't. Hey, Mike. Hello. Uh, Andy wants to talk Superman versus Batman again, and it's your turn, so tag, you're in. What a waste of time. I know, right? Because the real question is, what's better, Marvel or DC? Oh, boy. Are you Marvel or DC? Both sides have their vocal supporters. My billionaire in a high-tech suit's much better than yours. I disagree. Also, your archery-themed superhero is definitely worse than mine. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. But with close to 80 years each of story arcs, plot twists, reboots, reimaginings, character deaths and crossovers, it's an impossible and pointless task to try and objectively determine which is best. Well, it's Marvel. DC. I said impossible. That is, unless you look at just the video games based on each publisher's stable of superheroes. So, let's settle this once and for all, shall we? 
claiming Marvel is better than DC is as stupid as getting attached to Uncle Ben in a Spider-Man movie. For me, it's no contest. The games speak for themselves. Top of the list, of course, are the Batman Arkham games, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. They're objectively the best superhero games of all time, sitting at 92 and 94 on Metacritic, respectively. They're phenomenal. You don't need me to tell you this. Then there's DC Universe Online. Okay, people deserted it quicker than Batman goes through Robins, but the idea was great. Create your own superhero or villain, pick their powers and costume, and then save slash terrorize Gotham and Metropolis, depending on what kind of mood you're in. Terrorize, usually. We have to stop. Even DC's family games have been better than they have any right to be, with Lego Batman 2 DC superheroes being a charmy, funny, and consistently inventive standout. Come on, cheer up, sourpuss! Not cool. What about Gotham City Imposters, a first-person shooter featuring a gang of Jokers fighting a gang of Batmans? It was a fun XBLA game that is significantly better than the majority of full-price Marvel games, like the god-awful Avengers tie-ins and many, many bad Spider-Man games. No, not this time. The fact that both Captain America and Spider-Man have tried to rip off the Arkham games mechanics should tell you all you need to know about which company is the best when it comes to video games. Go back to bed. Did you say that was your best guy? Well, that made about as much sense as the Jonah Hex movie. Sure, DC looks great if you only look at Rocksteady's Arkham output, but you seem to be conveniently forgetting just how great most of Marvel's arcade titles have been. The six-player X-Men arcade game claimed more school kid pocket money than all the bullies in the world combined, as did Capcom's classic Punisher side-scroller, and the stellar run of beat-em-up games that followed are all a blast, from X-Men Children of the Atom right up to 2011's Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Crawler, then we have games such as X-Men Origins Wolverine, a hugely enjoyable third-person action game. As for a family man, what kind of mileage you get? And Spider-Man 2 on the PS2, a shining example of how to get an open-world superhero game right. And yes, Marvel games might have been borrowing from Rocksteady in recent times, but Spider-Man was already getting this stuff right back in 2004. DC, on the other hand, is the company responsible for Superman 64, a game that is so bad, so bad, that it is a strong contender for the worst game of all time. And you really want to talk movie tie-ins? How about this terrible Batman Begins game for the original Xbox? Dark shite more like. You can't just rely on Batman, Marvel's got the better stable of characters and by extension the better games. If you had to choose, you'd choose Marvel every time. You're dead, freak! Okay, well that didn't solve anything, I still don't know which one is best. It's Marvel. Oh, forget it. Now it's time for the comments in which we share what you've been saying on our internet website, in our social networks, and teaching dogs to bark in YouTube videos. Woof, woof, do a podcast. Yeah, I didn't get any of that. No, me neither. Last week we rounded up the eight most embarrassing achievements you don't want on your gamer card. People have been suggesting other embarrassing achievements, like the greatest light one who says Duke Nukem's turd burglar. Oh dear. It's ironic that someone who's playing Duke Nukem Forever has a problem playing with a piece Also, of on the subject of Duke Nukem Forever, Jollyboy1925 offers the following excuse. Listen, the only reason I have the Cyan Tits achievement in Duke Nukem Forever is because I appreciate it when anyone tries to combine two seeming unrelated things, even if they happen to be pinball and misogyny. Yeah, you wouldn't think those two things would go together, and yet here we are, thanks to Duke Nukem. Next up, on our explanation of the quantum physics of Bioshock Infinite, Samey74 says, Don't know if it's good or bad, but I can't help but think this video would just not work with Andy or Mike talking, because I just can't see either understanding all those long words at all. Sorry, you, you lost me at the bit about standing under things. Whoa, 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 Batman is Bruce Wayne. Since when? Finally, in our video about video game voice actors appearing in TV shows and movies featuring Deus Ex actor Elias Tufexis, Deus Ex actor Elias Tufexis says, Glad to be in this company of actors. Oh man, what did Andy say about no, him? No, no, it's fine. It's all positive. Oh, good. That's not a guy you want to annoy. <laughs> all right, Andy will be done with his Batman is best speech now, so I guess I'll go talk to him for a bit. Yeah, no problem. See you later. Spider-Man's clearly better. So that's it for show of the week. Don't forget to hit like if you liked it and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Between now and next time, leave us questions and feedback on Twitter at OutsideXbox or on Facebook at facebook.com slash OutsideXbox. Bye. Superman had a dog in a cape. Batman was in Batman and Robin. Oh, uh, yeah, fair point.